My next guest tonight is an Emmy award-winning actress who can be seen every Sunday night on The Practice. She's also author of the brand new book, Wake Up, I'm Fat. Please welcome Cameron Mannheim. <laughs> for being here. It's nice to be back. Great to have you, and, and, and congratulations on this book, too. Thank a lot you. of people are talking about it, and this cover. Yeah. This very cool cover. Yeah, that took a lot of therapy to get in that bathing suit, I have to tell you right now. I don't know about you, but I grew up in the Midwest, and we didn't wear bathing suits. And if we did, they had, like, short sleeves and turtlenecks. We didn't want to show our bodies, right. no matter what. And then when I was about 11, I moved to Southern California, where uh, people just walk around the streets in bikinis. And not only that, they, they shop for groceries in bikinis. Okay? <laughs> the two most terrifying things in the whole world, shopping for food while being practically naked, they do together. <laughs> and my instincts told me that shopping for double-stuffed Oreos in a bikini was a no-no. So <laughs> that's very, when I got fat. <laughs> yeah, it's very, I think growing up in L.A. would be just traumatic in, in general in that area. Because I grew up, you know, like outside Boston where people, you know, everyone looks like they have tuberculosis, all of us. You know? <laughs> See, now that's what you should call your book. It should be, wake up, I'm a seven-foot tall, Irish, pasty-faced, you know, freaky stud man. I'm a stud. I'm a stud. What are you going to call your book? Um, it'll be a better name than that, I assure you. <laughs> I'm going to write a whole series of books. I'm going to call, I'm going to have Wake Up, I'm Hungry. <laughs> then I'm going to do Wake Up, I'm Tired. Mm -hmm. And then I'll do Wake Up, I'm Horny. <laughs> Wake up, I don't care anymore. <laughs> I'm losing the will to live. I, uh, no, I, I you know, I'll, I'll, I'll mine was going to be Mr. Machismo, uh, but we won't do that. Try Senor Machismo. Senor Machismo. Uh, you know, you use, uh, it's funny because you said you're from the Midwest mm -hmm. and you talk about how proper it is in the Midwest. You, uh, there's quite a bit of profanity in this book. You're, you're comfortable using the profanity. Oh, yeah. The F word is my favorite word on the planet. When mm -hmm. I grew up, we would have these huge arguments at our dinner table about politics or about existential theory, and <laughs> we would just be yelling all kinds of profane words at each other. And I remember one time I was in college. I went to UC Santa Cruz, so that's a great setting for prof profanity right there. They and teach it there, yeah, probably. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That and all the Neil Young songs you can ever learn. <laughs> right, right. And so um, I'm on the phone with my mom and dad. They're down in Long Beach, and I'm up at school. I'm having this huge argument with my dad, and sometimes I'm just, Dad, that is so effing wrong. And my mom said, Cameron, that is, that is outrageous. I don't ever want to hear you speak to your father that way. That is disgusting, and it's unacceptable. Then my dad said, look, Sylvia, sometimes the F word is the only word you can use to really convey your meaning. And she what said, What a great dad. Oh, right? And so my mom said, you both disgust me, and she hangs up. Right. And about an hour later, I'm just, you know, putzing around the house, and I get a phone call. Oh, hello. Cameron, it's your mother. Yes. Well, I just wanted to say, you. <laughs> How about that for a good Jewish mother? I hope your bleeping thing is in good order, because you're going to need it. The bleeping person isn't here tonight. <laughs> well. Why was F you? You went that way for a while. And then for the punchline, you pull out the whole... I was trying to steer you away from it. Does anyone go, shh, I wouldn't get my story All right, well, well, we'll see what we do during that part of the show. All right. We may just cut to an old F Troop rerun. Uh, <laughs> you, uh, you talk about your, your, your parents quite a bit in the book. Your dad, a teacher, which yeah. I think might be... Is that a little hard when your dad's a teacher? You, you know, I suppose if your dad was a, a teacher of, you know, philosophy, that might be interesting. But my father was a teacher of mathematics and logic. So try getting the car keys from your dad when he teaches logic. <laughs> like, how many, how much does it cost to drive a mile? And I'm like, I don't know, it's 35 cents a gallon. I don't know, dad, it's like five cents a mile. He's like, no, you have to figure wear and tear on the car, depreciation, insurance, and my emotional stress. And then that's when I go, you know what? F it, I'm leaving. <laughs> right. I'm glad we're back to sort of the ab abbreviated form. But you have to. You have to imagine how fabulous it was when I finally got my motorcycle license and my dad would be like, where are you going? And I would say, well, if a girl leaves the house traveling at 60 miles an hour and she's gone for two hours, how far will she be? Yeah. See ya. <laughs> Bye. So he understands now. That's great.
good. Now you know this is a this is a little this is a little unusual, but I under, you have an award with you. I do tonight, but it's not your award. Well, okay, it's really heavy. Here, let me, let me show this award first. What is it? It's the Prism Heritage Award. And yeah, just get look in at really. The name. But look, get in really tight here. This is odd because you showed up holding this thing. Get in really tight. It's presented to Meg Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I think you think have I'm to. a lunatic. I'm okay. calling the police. What? <laughs> I was presenting at the PRISM Awards, which is an award ceremony that honors people who have made a contribution to the awareness of drug and alcohol abuse. Okay. And they were giving an award to uh, Andy Garcia and Meg Ryan for A Man Loves a Woman, you know, like three years after the fact. Right. And I was presenting. So I give Andy Garcia his award, and I literally almost fell off the stage because, well, because he's God. And um, I'm supposed to give Wait, Meg... go back. <laughs> no, I'll, the little ladies like him, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm supposed to present... It's a breakfast, by the way. P.S. Have to get up at 7 o'clock in the morning to give this award. Mm -hmm. Meg's not there. And a little teleprompter says, uh, Meg's shooting schedule precludes her from being here today, so I will accept the award on her behalf. And then I just added, uh, but I'm going to take it home, and she can get it back when she comes over to have coffee. So I walk off the stage, and the PRISM officials are like, okay, we'll take the award now. Give it back. And I said, uh, no, I'm serious. <laughs> I'm taking it home, and Meg has to come over to have coffee. I got up at 7 o'clock in the morning. She didn't. I'm taking it home. <laughs> so I still have the award. That's great. And I want Meg to come over. I want her to come over for a little cup of coffee and to get her beautiful Crystal Phallic Award. You know what's really cool is... She hasn't done the show yet, and now I have the award. <laughs> Come on, Bobby! Come on now! You think she's watching right now, anybody? <laughs> Come on, get it. All right. She's going to be like, let him keep it. <laughs> uh, the practice, of course, Sundays at 10 on ABC. Wake Up, I'm Fat is in stores now. Cameron, it, we, all, we have a blast every time you come by. Please come back again. Absolutely. I'll Cameron Mannheim, everybody.